Welcome to Social 5 University. Uh, this is Jeremiah Stetler, your host and chief content officer at Social 5, here with a special guest, Kate Drake, who is the managing editor over email marketing at Social 5. Brought her on for a special presentation today uh, to talk about email marketing strategies. Just a quick orientation uh, for those of you who are just joining. Uh, there is a questions box on the right hand side of your screen in the dashboard. We'll be doing those live for those of you who are joining us live with the live video cam. Awesome. Uh, those who are joining by recording, you'll have to try next time. Uh, we'll also be uh, doing a Q&A at the end for those uh, who do have questions. So without further ado, I'm going to pass uh, the uh, presentation over to Kate Drake uh, uh, for today. Go ahead, Kate. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us, everybody. Now, um, before we get started, I just want to warn you guys, I tend to get kind of excited about email. So if I start talking too fast or anything like that, feel free to raise your hand and, and just be like, hey, slow down, lady. You know, so um, I, I know that that's a, a bad habit of mine because I just get so excited. So um, we're just going to talk about email marketing basics today. And like Jeremiah said, um, I oversee all the email uh, accounts at Social 5. And um, that is one thing that's included with just about every package that we sell. And um, it's kind of one of the things that not a lot of our clients know about. Most of them have signed up for social media service and don't realize that they also have an email component um, that we can do email marketing on their behalf. So we wanted to share a little bit of this with you guys and um, let you know a little bit about it. So uh, we're going to get started with just some basics. I wanted to go with kind of an overview of what we'll be talking about today. So um, we're going to go over some basic terms because um, sometimes we get a little wonky and start talking about things and throwing around terms that um, maybe, you know, if you're outside the industry are not quite as familiar to you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about email analytics. Whoop. Let's see here. Sorry. We're going to um, start talk about building your email list, crafting an engaging email, and a little bit about subject line strategies. So we'll, we'll be going over all of those things. So um, the first one I want to talk about is some important terms. And you may have uh, heard some of us throw these around and not known exactly what we were talking about. So uh, here's your chance to, to find out. So the first thing I want to talk about is the subject line. Now, this is something that all of you have seen a thousand times a day because it hits your inbox. This is the title of the email, what shows up in the recipient's inbox, and what they're going to see um, when the email comes through. And now the reason that's important is because that's kind of the, the first introduction that they're going to have to your email. And um, hopefully you have a good teaser there that's going to pique their interest and make them want to read your email. Um, the next thing that we talk about a lot is your open rate. Now, um, this, is, this is the number of people who open your email. And we usually uh, talk about it as a percentage of the total list of people who've opened it. Now the industry average for this is 18%. I know that might sound really, really low, um, but you've got to think about it as, as sort of the internet's version of a direct mail campaign, right? Th those mail campaigns that you get in your, in your mailbox. 18% um, is really good if you get that many people to open your email. Um, now, obviously if your personal email is only getting an 18% open rate, then Maybe you need to make some new friends or something, but uh, but for your business, that's really good. The other thing that we're um, that we throw around a lot that you've probably heard is the unsubscribe rate, and this is the number of people who um, unsubscribe from your email list. And we want to keep this number below one percent. Now, the open rate and the unsubscribe rate are the analytics that we were talking about, right? The the numbers that we track to um, reflect. Uh, who's opening your email and who's unsubscribing from it. And so that's why I've given you these numbers here where we have, you know, 18% is pretty normal for, um, for a marketing email for an open rate. And we want to keep your unsubscribe rate below 1%. Now, why those are important is because they tell you how well your email is performing, who's opened it. And um, they also can kind of tell you if there's a problem. You know, if your open rate is really low, we probably need to make some changes. Or if your unsubscribe rate is really high, we probably need to do some culling of your list and um, kind of scrub that a little bit to make it sure it's reaching people who are actually interested in receiving your email. 
Oops, sorry, guys, I went on that slide a little too long. <laughs> so that's those are the analytics, and that's why they're important. So um, if you have any questions about that um, as we go along, feel free to ask, and um, you'll see us toss those terms around some more. So the next thing I want to talk about, this is like, if you get nothing else from this presentation, I would hope that, that this would be um, something we, that helps because so many of the questions I get about email um, every day are related to the CAN SPAM Act of 2003. And um, the CAN SPAM Act is a piece of legislation that was signed in into law and it stands for controlling the assault of non-solicited pornography and marketing. Um, so the whole idea here is um, to have a law that prohibits you from sending out a, um, a an email that talks, you know, that has a subject line about sparkly unicorns for your kid. And when you open it, it has pornography or, um, you know, that, has says it's going to be pictures of puppies and it's an ad for Viagra or something like that, right? So it's it's to protect the consumer. So we're going to go over a couple of little things that can spam covers, and I'm also going to talk about how Social Five's email program um, supports these things and and is compliant with them. Oop, where am I going? Sorry, I can't. There we go. <laughs> All right. So there are seven basic rules for can spam. Um, the big, the first one is don't use false or misleading header information. So that goes back to the subject line that we were talking about. Um, you can't have a subject line that says, you know, you're a winner and then not have a prize that you're giving the person or whatever, you know, it, it needs to be related to the email and it can't promise anything that is not included in the email. Um, again, it's kind of along with number two, you can't use deceptive subject lines. Um, also with the header information includes, um, it needs to be clear who the email is coming from. So that's why with all of our clients who use our email service, we ask for your email address because that way it's coming from you. Um, same with the subject line. It has to be very clear. You need to identify the message as an ad. Now that is a little, there's a little more leeway on this one. Um, because you know, you don't have to say this is an ad in your email or anything. You just need to make it clear that it's a marketing email, which is pretty easy. You know, we um, make sure we identify the business. We uh, talk about, you know, here's our all of our social channels and we make it clear that, you know, even though we're hoping to provide you with helpful information in this email, it is something that we're using to promote our business. Tell recipients where you're located. This is a big one. I get asked this a lot. Um, at the bottom of all of our emails, you'll see in, in small print, there will have a little thing that says, you know, uh, social five, and it will have our address. And a lot of people get annoyed with that and say, can we take that off? You know, that's really obnoxious. I, I don't like having that on there. But the reason it's there is because it's, it's required to be compliant with this law. Um, tell recipients how to opt out of future communication. This is a big one, too. Um, you'll all see on all the emails that we send out. And, and if you're doing this on your own, you need to make sure you have these com things all compliant too. You need to have an unsubscribe button where they can say, I don't want to be part of your mailing list anymore. And then you need to honor those opt-out requests promptly. You have 10 days to comply with an opt-out request. Now, sometimes people don't uh, want to hit that unsubscribe button. They'll just send you an email back and say, hey, could you please remove me from your mailing list? And if that happens, that's easy to deal with too. Um, if, if you're using Social 5 email, just send that on over to me and I will take them off your list for you. Um, and then the other thing, uh, this is important for you guys, you've got to monitor what others are doing on your behalf. Basically, this is saying that you cannot contract your liability away when it comes to email marketing. You can't hire someone else to do your email marketing and then say, oh, sorry, I didn't know they were sending out pornography on, you know, from my account or whatever. You are still liable for that. And um, so good for you guys all who are showing up here because you are monitoring what others are doing on your behalf by attending this webinar. So, um, so that's really important. And all of these things are things that we're working on and, and that we are currently compliant with, with our Social 5 email service. And so, um, and that's really important because if you violate one of these, you can get uh, fined and the fine is $16,000 
per instance. So um, that's why when you ask me if I can take the, uh, you know, the opt out button off of your email or something, I'm going to say no. So it's for so we can comply with this law. It's very important. All right. So I wanted to talk about um, one of the big things that we get uh, questions on is how do I get started building an email list, especially if you're kind of a newer business. Um, it can be kind of intimidating. You're like, well, I want to send out an email, but who do I send it to? Do I just send it to like my friends and family? Um, and so we're going to talk about a couple of strategies to help that list get going. Um, the best way is to take email addresses that you already have. And it, that's kind of, I mean, I say that and you're probably thinking like, well, I don't have any, right? But you do. Um, and, and here's a few ways you can get them. If you have an existing email provider, like if you're using a Gmail account for your business or you have an Outlook um, business account, uh, Yahoo, anything like that, any email that you have done on behalf of your business, if someone has sent you an email that was related to your business, you now have their email address. Another one, we've got this picture of the classic fishbowl up there where everybody does, you know, win a free lunch by putting your business card in the fishbowl. Those have email addresses on them you know, get them entered into a spreadsheet and send them on over. We can use those as um, as an email list. Um, a lot of places also feature a contact form on their website. If you, if you do anything where you're selling or if you um, have a way that people can get in touch with you through your website, you know, it will have their email address. Um, online orders almost all require an email address. So if you sell something online, you've got a, a huge database of email addresses right there. And then lastly, we've got our, our little uh, polka dotted girl here uh, with some ideas. Ask. Um, you know, I don't know if you've, I, I know uh, I've got two little girls and I, I, so I shop at children's clothing stores a lot. And um, they ask me every time I check out, do you have, um, can, can I get your email address um, to sign up for coupons or whatever? So the next thing we're going to move on to, I see a, a Someone's got a question about this exporting from LinkedIn. So, um, so those are kind of the existing email addresses that you probably already have on hand. This tip, this is my little power tip right here for LinkedIn. This is my favorite way to build a list quickly. Um, you, you know, are, it's just, if you don't have anything, it's a great place to start. Um, and the reason why is exporting your, LinkedIn context is a good idea is because these people want to contact, um, to connect with you on a professional basis, not a personal basis. And, um, so this is why I recommend like LinkedIn over something like Facebook, you can download all of the, um, uh, email addresses of your Facebook friends, but people on Facebook don't want to connect with you in, in a professional sense. They don't, you know, my uncle sends me stuff all the time, like, please like my business page. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to like your business page. It's boring, you know? So, um, the people on LinkedIn, they know that you're connecting with each other because you're, you want to connect professionally. And, um, if you don't even have a LinkedIn account, it's really easy to get started. That's, I, I've actually coached a few people on doing that to just, you know, go in, create an account, spend an hour or two looking around and seeing who, um, who, you know, and making some connections and you'll get a list pretty darn quickly. So um, that's, a, that's a great way to get going. Um, the other thing that we have available for Social 5 customers that's really uh, handy is we have the mobile suite. And um, I know some of you are using that already. If you're not, we can totally get you started. It's really, really, uh, really, really helpful. So um, all you have to do is you install the mobile suite on your phone similar to an app and you can pull it up and I, I've got a picture of mine right here. There's a join my email list button. You enter the person's email address, click join, and they immediately get this bounce back email that you'll see over here on the right that talks about, you know, it usually says just a short message about, I'm glad we've connected. Thanks so much. Check out my latest blog. And um, the great part about that is that they not only receive that bounce back email that has all your contact information and, all, and links to all your social channels, but they're also subscribed to your monthly email list. So now they're going to be getting an email from you every month that keeps you in, in touch and, and helps you um, stay connected with them. 
Um, one thing I did want to talk about is, uh, you know, uh, building a list that's really meaningful people. Um, sometimes it's really tempting to go purchase a list or use a recycled list from something else. And I would really discourage you guys from doing that. It's far better to have a list of 5,000 or even 500 people who have really connected with your business and know you or know your team versus a list of 50,000 people who've never heard of you before or who have only the most tangential knowledge of what you're doing. Um, it's just like any other social medium. People are going to open it if they know you and know um, your company. And um, if you have a really large list that not a lot of people are opening or people are unsubscribing from, that's going to get you in trouble with some spam filters. And we're going to talk about those a little bit here in a minute. So just keep that in mind as you're building your list. Try and make it, you know, go for authenticity, people who really do know you. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, crafting an engaging email. Um, now, if you are a Social 5 customer, we do this on your behalf also. Um, but if if you want to write your own, we do have a couple of clients who like to write their own too. So I just wanted to go through a couple of kind of do's and don'ts for some, some tips on how to write an email that's going to hopefully be really engaging. The first one is to keep it short. And um, we usually try to keep ours down to one page where people don't have to scroll. And the reason for this is that people just don't have time. I mean, we've seen so many studies on the on internet usage where, you know, the amount of time that people's eyes stay on a page is really, really short. And so we're trying to keep them interested for just a short period of time so that we can get the message across. Um, second, you want to write with your audience in mind. This one is so important because, um, you know, I, I was thinking about this the other day when I was working with one of our manufacturing clients. They um, sent out an email last month about ball joint valves. Now, if I got an email about ball joint valves, I would not open it because I don't know anything about that. But their audience is not the general public. Their audience is other people in the manufacturing industry who know about that and are gonna use that for their business. So that's something that's really important to think about is, is your is your clientele who's, who you're marketing in this email, is it the general public? Like if you're, you know, a realtor or something like that, where you're trying to drum up business from average Joe, or are you more of a B2B type communicator who is reaching out to people who are in your same industry and understand kind of that jargon and, and things like that? Um Next one, focus on news they can use. We don't want this to be just a, a sales email. We don't, um, you know, we want to give them some reason to open it and some reason to keep subscribing to your email. Um, you know, so that's something we really focus on here at Social Five is we try and include tips or tricks or a helpful blog about back to school or some recipes for an upcoming holiday or something that's useful and provides them information that they go, oh, you know, hey, those emails are pretty cool. I, I should keep keep subscribing to them. Um, another great thing you can do is through emails is share deals or coupons or specials that you have going on. Um, people like to know what's happening in your business. And if you have something uh, special going on for, uh, you know, your uh, business for a holiday or because it's something special that month or whatever. It's, it's a great opportunity to share that with your audience and get that, that information out. Um, you want to keep your email really simple and really streamlined. It's so tempting to put in a million graphics and like all these links and stuff like that, but that really ends up doing more harm than good. Um, you want to keep it very streamlined, very simple, and um, you want a bit higher text ratio than you have of photos. Um, I'm going to show you an example of, of a problem child email here in a minute. So, uh, and last, this is a big one, edit for spelling, punctuation, and content. I, I can't emphasize that one enough. Get someone else to look at it. And another thing that I really like to do is I read it aloud to myself um, because sometimes I catch things that, you know, when I say it out loud that I maybe w wouldn't beforehand. And this goes for your whole email, your subject line, um, all of your content and everything. All right. So here's, uh, so those are the things you do want to focus on. Here are the things that you want to avoid. So, um, some email don'ts 
First off, you don't want to be focused entirely on the sale. If people are getting your email and all it is about is I'm sending you this email because I want you to buy my stuff and there's no helpful information or anything, they're going to unsubscribe from your list. They, there's no reason for them to stay engaged with you because they already know what you offer as a product and, um, and they don't need to be reminded, buy from us, buy from us, buy from us. Um, the other thing that, another thing that can really turn people off is if you're using too much industry specific jargon that your audience won't understand. Remember the ball joint valves, right? If that was going out to the general public, I don't even know what that is, <laughs> but, and, uh, but a manufacturing client is. So you need to make sure that, you know, especially with like acronyms and things like that, um, you may need to spell those out for people who don't deal with it on an everyday basis the way you do. Um, you don't want to clutter up your email with too many photos and links. This kind of goes back to the same thing we were just talking about that, you know, if you have too many photos and too many links in your email, it's going to get picked up by a spam filter. And, um, and you don't want that because you want it to actually reach your client. And the other thing you want to avoid is emailing just for the sake of emailing. Um, you know, you don't want to say, well, it's Tuesday and we send out the email on Tuesday. So what could we, what could we write about this week? Um, you know, we want to have com a compelling reason to email every month. Or, or however often you're doing it. And the other thing I was going to talk about is contacting your customers too frequently. We do a monthly email at Social Five because we feel like that's a really good amount to contact your customers. It's often enough to stay in touch, but it's not so often that they're annoyed by you. Now, some companies do like a daily deal or something like that, and they email their customers every single day. Um, depending on what industry you're in, that could work for you. But um, it's always better. This is a, definitely a less is more circumstance. You know, once a month is is probably plenty. If you want to do more often than that, we certainly can talk about that and, and craft a strategy. Um, but we want to just make sure that it's not too often and that we're not bothering them too frequently. So um, earlier we talked about how the subject line of your email is really important because it's the first thing that anybody sees. And it's going to be the first impression of your of your email. And we want people to see that and go, open me, open me, right? So here are some tips for that. Again, remember back to can spam. We want to make sure the subject accurately reflects the content of the email. So we, we need to make sure that whatever we're saying in the subject line is what is really reflected in there. Um, something that will help you a lot is avoiding use of special characters like exclamation marks. Those tend to get picked up by spam filters. If it says, you know, sale, 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 um, the spam filter goes, oh, that's probably spam. So, um, you know, we, we try and avoid uh, exclamation marks. Um, and sometimes special characters can show up weird depending on what other email client people are using. So if it has a question mark, it might look good on most email clients, but, you know, on some other obscure thing that some of your clients are using, it might look a little funny. So we try and avoid those special characters if we can. Um, you want to keep it short. Um, you, the idea is that you want the, the whole subject line to display in the person's inbox if you can. And um, I don't know if any of you use like Gmail or things like that, but you often run into this where the subject line goes on and on way beyond what you know, you can see right there in the, in the display window. We, we try and keep it around 30 characters, um, but that's, you know, just kind of a guideline. It can go plus or minus if needed. Um, avoid repeats. You don't want to send a happy Easter email every single April or whatever, right? Or, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that, you know, like if, for Social 5, we don't want to say every month that our email says something like, you know, craft a social strategy. And then we send out the next one that says craft a social strategy. We want it to be different each time. And um, then the other thing you need to do is, is balance the appeal of a, to a general audience with overgeneralization. <clears throat> so you want to make sure it's something that everybody can understand, but you also don't want it to be so generic that it doesn't stand out at all. So we're going to run through a couple of these subject lines and kind of, we've got some that are None of these subject lines are bad per se, but we can make them better. 
if that makes sense. So we've got an instead of and try column. So instead of add a touch of humor to your office, you could try saying put laughter to work. It's just a little more engaging, a little more compelling. Instead of we've moved, that's a, a common one we get. Instead, try visit our new location in Salt Lake City. Why is this one better? Well, it tells not, it, it's not so generic that it's just like, oh, well, you've moved to where, you know, it tells you exactly where the new location is going to be and hopefully helps you go, oh, I live in Salt Lake City. That's interesting. I wonder where it is. So it's just a little bit more specific. Um, happy Thanksgiving. These are really popular. Happy Halloween, happy Thanksgiving, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with sending out an email with that heading, but you can make it a little more compelling. Um, what I really like to do for around Thanksgiving time is what we're thankful for. And we get people to talk about what they're thankful for and, and express their thanks to their, um, to their clients. Um, welcome spring. Nothing wrong with that. Again, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine, but we can give them a little more information. How about saying, welcome spring with these recipes? You know, this is, it's time to start getting out the grill. Here's some fun things. And, and people will, you know, they're going to want to open that because they want to see what the recipe is. Um, oh, uh, so yeah, we talked about spam filters here. Uh, earlier. And I wanted to kind of bring that up again. They're a big challenge in email marketing. Um, and here, there's a few things that they don't like. And, and again, these things are not terrible in and of themselves. The problem becomes when you have all of them in one email. So, you know, exclamation mark, things like, wow, sale, win, you could already be a winner, things like that. Um, subject lines with things like, earn a hundred thousand dollar income or, um, you know, people start worrying that you're the Nigerian prince, right? That's famous on the internet for soliciting money. Too many links that say, click here, click here, click here. Um, things like that just really make it difficult for your email to get through the spam filters because, you know, something like Gmail or Yahoo, they, they look at those things. They, they have these algorithms that um, sort through. It's not a person. It's a, it's a computer algorithm who is looking at all these things and going, gosh, that has a ton of exclamation marks and a whole bunch of graphics and a bunch of links. It's probably spam. And so, um, so those are things we want to use sparingly. We can still use them, but not all together all at once. And I want, I wanted to uh, show you guys this example of a spam a spam filtered email that I received uh, just a little while ago. And the thing that I thought was kind of sad about this is I subscribed to this email list. This is a living social deal for Salt Lake City. Um, I, I signed up for their email because I liked some of their deals and I was interested in that. And I said, sure, send me your emails, you know, whenever you have them. But this email ended up in my spam box, even though I'm subscribed to the list. And here's why. It's got too many graphics. I don't know if you guys can see that, you know, it's got... Uh, the owl, it's got a spa package. And then the email continued down and had like 10 more pictures. So, I mean, that's a lot of graphics in there. It has too many links. Every single one has a view deal, view deal, view deal. And the uh, text is also a hyperlink. If you click on that, it will take you to the deal to see the owl necklace or the acupuncture package. It's just way too much sell, sell, sell. There's dollar signs everywhere. It's got pricing everywhere. It's just way too clear that that this is to sell stuff to you. And there's not enough text. Remember we talked about how you want your text to outweigh the number of photos in your email? That's a, This is a prime example. It, it looks great. It looks beautiful. But sometimes that aesthetically pleasing is, is not what you really want because we still want to make it look good but we also want it to actually get to people instead of ending up in their spam uh, folder. So um, that's kind of a, a good example of a problem child email and, and what we want to avoid. So um, that's it for right now. Um, I, I've got my contact information here that you guys are welcome to take down and give me a call or shoot me an email if you have any questions after this webinar about um, email marketing or anything like that. 
And um, I'll turn the time back to Jeremiah, and we can open it up for some questions. All right. Hey, th thanks a bunch, Kate. It is and, and what a pleasure to have her with us today. Uh, you know, again, she oversees the email marketing side of our business, uh, which sends out uh, you know email marketing campaigns for hundreds of customers. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to her. Uh, it's important to note she's also uh, one of the original, uh, you know, social five gurus, uh, you know, came right when they, the, the company began. So with that, let me, uh, let me open it up here and see if there are uh, questions you have. Again, you can uh, uh, leave your question there on the uh, uh, right hand side of your screen under the questions box. It can be anything, whether it is email marketing or social media based. All right. So the next, the first question is, uh, how do you add a photo to the uh, to the mobile tool? Do you want to do you want to tackle that one, Kate? Sure. Well, um, unfortunately, you're not able to uh, upload a photo by yourself. Um, we have to. That's something we have to do on our back end uh, of our of our flex capacitor system, as we like to call it. Um, but it's really easy. All you need to do is is email us the photo. You can send it either to me or to um, our operations team, and one of us can upload it for you. And we'll get that put in place, and it'll show up looking great. Super easy. Good. So. Thank you. A great question. Um, have a, a question from someone who says, uh, currently I'm not seeing emails myself. I'm just letting you guys do it. Should I be? Now, and uh, the answer is both a yes and a no. Um, <laughs> using, using our service is a wonderful way to be able to have an email marketing campaign that uh, does not require you to take a lot of time out of your schedule. It doesn't require you to go through another email client like a MailChimp or something like that. Uh, the one thing I would encourage, though, is to look for opportunities when uh, you can participate in some way, you know, I, you know, perhaps I'm speaking for Kate a little too much here, but if, oh, if, okay. if there is a, a promotion or a deal or, or if you want to write up your own text, that's something that, that Kate would be happy to yeah. send on your behalf. Yeah. And um, I also try and reach out to all the people, all the clients we have who are using our email service at least once a month and see if you have anything coming up. Um, and it, I'm always amazed at some of the things I get that are that are really cool. Um, I know I got someone who said that they wanted to highlight that um, uh, it was Autism Awareness Month this month. And um, that's something that's important to them and their family. And um, I had another guy who um, is a fellow University of Utah fan who we wrote an email about how he was excited about the U of U basketball team made it to the Sweet 16. Um, you know, so we can definitely add that custom touch. And it's just nice to add a, a little personality every now and then and, and show a little bit of yourself, which can be a little intimidating on social media, admittedly. But it does make people realize that you're a real person and it makes them feel a more personal connection to your emails. So, yeah, anytime you have something specific that you want to do, we're totally happy to, to work with you on that. And then the idea is that, you know, if you obviously you're probably not going to have something like that every single month. And on those months, we'll take care of it for you. You don't have to come up with something new every time or right. ever if you don't want to. <laughs> awesome. Hey, I had a question just came through here uh, about uh, someone sees an email on Living Social that uh, they seem to get away with a lot of spam types of practices. Any, any thoughts about why some sites may be able to get away with that? Well, I mean, they're compliant with the law. Right. Like they, they are following the cam spam legislation. There's a way to opt out of the email. They tell me where they are. Their subject line isn't misleading or anything like that. So they're compliant with the law. The problem is just that they're ending up in the spam filter. And so those are they're kind of two separate issues The the cam spam is the legal requirements. And, and you could follow all of those legal requirements, but still end up not crafting a great marketing email that still gets picked up by a spam filter. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. Great. Thank you. All right. I have a question that came through about how to load the mobile uh, suite on your Android phone. And uh, thank you for bringing this up. And, and even though you'd think the mobile suite and email marketing may not be connected, they really are. Um, uh, you know, during last, uh, during our Universe, so, Social Five University session two weeks ago, we talked about how to use the mobile suite more effectively to gather email addresses on the go. So you can capture someone's uh, address as part of a face-to-face -face interaction like a mobile business card. 
So I'll, I'll give you a quick explanation here, but you may want to contact our support folks at support at social5.com to walk you through that. An Android can be a little bit tricky depending on what model you're using. With most Android phones, what you'll do is open an internet browser, go to your mobile suite page, okay? Uh, so mine, for instance, is jeremiah.social5.net. Okay, so that's my address. So I would go to that page on my phone, bookmark the page, then open up your bookmarks and then press and hold down the button on the bookmark. Okay, that'll give you an option to add it to your home screen. That's how you do it on most Android phones. It seems a little complex, but our support team can't whoops, can help you out with that. Sorry, about that. I'm just throwing my phone around trying to break the screen again. And it works for iPhone as well. So either way, we, we've got directions and we can help you walk through that. All right, question. Do we have uh, to take the email off our list? Or do you do that for us? Uh, what are what are the steps? So I guess this is if we're uploading it from another email. Sure. Plan. So um, there's there's two options for people who want to unsubscribe from your list. There is an unsubscribe button at the bottom of every email that we send out. They can either hit that, or if they want to, they can send uh, they can just reply to you. Now remember, the email is coming from you. Um, we're just sending it on your behalf. So you're going to be the person who gets that email that says, hey, please remove me from your list. And when you do that, you just send it on over to me and I'll get them taken care of. We'll remove them right away. It's really easy. Fantastic. Uh, I do have a question uh, that came in. Uh, but sometimes we see these emails that have bullet points or numbers or letters. Does it matter if there are bullet points in the text when it comes to a spam filter. No, the the a bullet point or a number or something is is going to count as text. So um, something like that is just fine. The again, the thing that we want to watch out for there is that we don't want it to be too long. If it if it gets to be really really lengthy, people start the spam filter starts to kind of get a little iffy about it, and people just aren't going to read the whole thing. They're in a hurry. They want to get the gist of your email really quickly. Excellent. Uh, question, if, if, if someone does want to send you a promotion or an advertisement, do they just send it to you by email? How do they do that? That's that's the best way. Yes. Send it on over to me via email. Or if you're in contact with the writer who oversees your account, you can send it on to them too. Um, that, usually we co I coordinate with the writer to put it in your email. And also, if it's an event or something, we'll put it on your Facebook page too. So um, either way, and you've got my contact information right there, so feel free. Great. I have a question that came in, of, uh, and, and we received this one before. Is there a way to create subgroups of, of emails to reach a more targeted audience? Um, at this point, there is a way to do that, uh, but at this point, it does cost an additional uh, amount to, to, to do that. We have to create a new system uh, within uh, or a new account within Social 5 to handle that. So the answer is yes, with the asterisk that there is an additional cost. Uh, generally, it's about $79 a month to create a subcategory of, of, of people. Now, that, that can be good if you have perhaps a B2C side of your business and a B2B side of your business. Or if you're like uh, you know some of our, uh, our fitness gyms, they have have people who are existing customers and prospective customers. So it is an option just at an additional cost. All right, uh, the auto response intro email that people receive when they uh, when we capture their email address is great. Can I tweak that a little or should I uh, or, uh, send you my revision? Sorry, I can't read very well. Thoughts there? <laughs> yeah, um, we usually put in a, kind of a, a generic text for you. Um, that's different depending on, on what industry you're in and everything um, that talks about, you know, hey, I'm glad we connected. Here's my contact information. But if you want to change that up, we can totally do that for you. Just send it on over again, either to me or support at social5.com. And we can uh, it's really easy to upload that text into your uh, email. And that way your bounce back will always have that text. And, and if you want to change it once a year or something, you can do that, too. Great. Yeah, one, one last question here. Uh, a person asked about whether there's a way to look at a historical recap of their emails or really their email analytics once there is a blast that goes out. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, there is. Um, it takes a little legwork on our part to pull up those analytics, but we can certainly do that for you. Um, if that's something that you'd be interested in, I, 
you know, give me a call or shoot me an email and, and we can talk about that. Um, depending on how often you want something like that. I mean, if it's a, if you want it once a year, we can totally do that for you. If you want more in-depth analytics on like a monthly basis or something like that, we might have to talk about um, adding a little bit of supplemental fee just for the legwork that goes into it on, on the part of our staff. So, um, but yeah, we can totally give you that information. And, and, and just so you know, there, there are, uh, there's development in place or going on at Social 5 to be able to make those analytics more readily available. So that is likely something that you will see in the, in the months and quarters ahead. Okay. Um, oh, there's one more question that came in and I'm, and I'm glad this one came up. It's, uh, would we suggest buying a list uh, and downloading it, uh, you know, into your account? And, and that's a great question. We have that that come up. Um, we would advise against that. And maybe maybe Kate, I'll pass yeah, it on to you. Yeah, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, about building an authentic list is the way I like to talk about it. But if you buy a list on the Internet, you know, I mean, that, and it's so tempting because they're out there and it's cheap data that you can just take and dump, dump into your account, right? Um, but the thing is, those people don't have any connection to your business. And um, so it's going to be a lot better if you have a smaller list, a, a well-curated smaller list that is people who are actually interested in your business. And um, you might say, well, oh, if I have, you know, 25,000 people on my list, it doesn't matter if they know me or not, because I just have a better chance of, of reaching more people. But the problem becomes that then you're going to have a much higher unsubscribe rate because people will see that. Um, email and go, I don't know who these people are. They'll click the unsubscribe. And that unsubscribe number is really important because if it starts creeping up, that's another thing that spam filters will start to, to notice. They'll um, look at the server that that email is coming from and they will say, gosh, that server spends, sends a lot of emails that get unsubscribed and it will start It'll, it'll go into your spam ranking. So it really can damage the overall credibility of your list and it can make it so it doesn't reach people who would actually be interested in buying your product. So um, yeah, we really, really discourage that because I, I mean, it seems so tempting and it seems like, yeah, I'm going to reach all these people, but um, it really is, it really is not the best way. And, and just kind of on a, the same note, you know, Please remember that all of this is very subjective, you know, um, like we were talking about with the uh, the subject lines, you know, depending on who you're reaching, not every single one is going to be a hit. You know, it's, it's all very, very subjective. So there's a lot of, um, you know, different components that go into it and stuff. And so if you have a question, we can totally advise you on it and, um, you know, we're happy to walk you through whatever questions you may have or anything like that. And we, we spend a lot of time doing research and analytics on these things so that we can come up with what's going to be best. And um, unfortunately that still leads us to answer your questions a lot with, well, it depends. <laughs> and we can, we can walk you through the different factors and help you make a good decision that way. Great. Hey, well, thank you everyone for who participated in today's webinar uh, coming up in, in about 15 minutes here, we'll be uh, reviewing, the final four contests and some of the analytics, really amazing uh, news on that one and giving you a sneak peek at Disneyland. But in the meantime, hopefully this provides you with some answers on email marketing, email marketing strategies. So thank you everyone. Uh, pleasure, pleasure uh, talking with you today. Thanks guys.